Greetings all for Iron Man 601 here. Welcome back to Cold Waters and welcome aboard USS Wisconsin BB-64, the world's last battleship. That contact bearing 050 is going to be another Iowa-class battleship because we have ourselves... We have ourselves a battle royale between Iowa-class battleships, Iowa versus Iowa. That is what Contact Sierra 1 is. We, of course, don't know that at this time. However, that is what is going on. Because that's what I have set up the scenario to be in our mission editor. So, what we need to do is Come right to zero flank this thing. Zero. Helm I. Contact reestablished with Sierra 2. What is Sierra 2? Sierra 2 Con is out there in the Florida Sierra Panhandle. Last bearing, zero, five, zero. Contact I don't think Sierra 2 is real. Ooh, what the hell's going on there? We got splashes out there from gunfire, I would think. Okay. Let's turn our ship on. Okay, we got Romeo 3, which is merchant ship. Merchant 1. Okay. Um, Master 1 is a merchant ship as well. So then, Sierra... Oh, missiles. We got missiles away. Missiles away, missiles away. Okay. That is... Alright, Master 2. Alright, Master 2 is our rival Iowa class ship. Okay. That's what this is. Come right to zero eight nine Helm I. Okay. So we need to counter this ship with everything that we've got. We've got our chaff ready, we have got our sea whiz ready, and then we have got to start to get offensive with this thing. We have TASMs ready to go and one underway. Another one ready to go now. All right, he's countering. He is countering with harpoons. My objective here is just going to be to utterly overwhelm him with missile fire. Okay. We are going to have a missile inbound in a few seconds here. We just got to make sure that we can counter it. We need visual on it. Alright. 10,000 yards. A test shot of our shaft worked. All right. Master three. Master three. That was a trawler. Master three has been hit. All right. We got a missile inbound, close range. Stand by. Chaff. Chaff is going. Looks like we have distracted this one. All right. Don't hit us. Don't hit us. We've been hit. Okay. We got a hit there. We shot him down. Unfortunately, the sea we shot him down too close. Damage control propulsion, please. Hull is at 88% integrity. We do have a hit. It's almost entirely localized below the waterline. We shot him down. We shot that missile down. Unfortunately, it was too close, and we hit. This is that Iowa contact. Um, we don't see him yet. All right, there it is. We've got him. He is engaging us with guns as well. Incoming missile. I'm countering this incoming missile with chaff. Alright, we've countered that missile successfully. We are good. This Iowa has been hit. We've hit him with another missile. He's been hit. He is really badly hit. We've got him. He's down. He is down, he is down. We overwhelm him with missiles. We are in decent shape here. 88% hull integrity. 
Our missiles continue to hit him. He is going down by the head with a pretty severe port list. But he is down. We do have another two missiles inbound to us at the moment. So unfortunately, we cannot stay with him and watch him sink. But our missiles are continuing to impact. That is good. Deploy, Jeff. Back to us here. All right, we're hit. We are hit. That's our second missile hit. Damage control the pumps, please. Damage control. Lay into the diesel space. All right, we have one more missile inbound from him. He has partially capsized. He's listed hard over to port, and he is about to go under. All integrity is 71% for us. We have one torpedo tube out. However, our target is almost entirely underwater at this time. A little bit of reserve of buoyancy in the forward section, but he took at least four hits. We have a missile inbound 10,000 yards. However, he is truly done. So Iowa versus Iowa, we have cut ourselves a pretty definitive result there. We overwhelmed him with missiles, and he is just about done. Deploy, Jeff. Inward bound missile detected. All right, and he is down. Cool, cool. So could an Iowa defeat an Iowa? Yes. Evidently so. Coming back to us, we are at 71% hull integrity. Propulsion is in trouble. Our pump situation is not good. However, we are not flooding. We do have a pretty bad hit, starboard midships, and a pretty bad hit as well, port aft. But we are surviving. Flooding is under control. And we have got these merchant ships, this merchant trawler, unfortunately, just settled on the bottom. He is an innocent victim of this. And this other Iowa which has uh, inverted itself as it's on its way to the seafloor. But this trawler survives. I'm happy about that. Propulsion repaired. Me. Con sonar, we are cavitating. And the pumps are almost repaired as well. Oh, pumps have been repaired. All right. So we're left with a not entirely healthy ship, but uh, more or less healthy one. Iowa versus Iowa. <laughs> Iowa wins. And really what did it was um, we engaged him with missiles, just overwhelming missile strike capability. Um, did not use guns at all in that engagement. Really because uh, I don't think we were quite close enough. We would have had decent accuracy with the guns had we chosen to use them, but it uh, was not necessary. That impact below the waterline, though, that is just devastating. But uh, we have absolutely uh, straightened that out, as the damage control situation would attest. So that is good. I can't imagine, though, what the difficulties would be, though, to repair something like that. Obviously, that would require dry docking. But the issue with these ships, and in reality, they never really got any sort of severe combat damage like this, nor any severe damage from any other incident, although there were a couple grounding incidents with the Iowas. Um, repairing that shell plating would have been really difficult, only because a battleship is only good if it can remain cohesively armored, and these ships had what they called an all-or-nothing armor scheme meaning that they had the armored citadel, which was basically the core of the ship, all of your command and control infrastructure in there, the main battery turrets, and then later on your um, a lot of your electronics for the missile systems. Not all of them, though. There was the um, Combat Information Center, CIC, up here in the superstructure. But you had your main and secondary battery plots in the armored citadel. You had Central Station, which was the main conning position for the ship. You had aft searing, which was a secondary conning, conning position for the ship. And then your third and fourth conning positions were the main navigation bridge, 
which you can see here with the big windows, as well as higher up on the 011 level in the superstructure where you had a final conning position. Those were outside the Citadel, but Central Station and aft steering were inside the Citadel. So you could navigate the ship, you could power the ship, and you could defend the ship with your main and secondary batteries, all within the armored Citadel. The problem with having hits where we have these hits is they are both within the bounds of the armored Citadel which extended roughly from turret one to turret three. This means that in order to replace that shell plating, it needs to be armored steel plate. Special treatment steel in a lot of the areas, and then you had thicker um, steel sections that would have been individually cast in the shipyards when they were building these ships initially. Later on in the careers of these ships, we lost the ability to do that because of budget cuts and brain drain and everything else that has affected the United States since the 1930s when these ships were designed. So you would have gotten into a situation where, yes, you could have patched the ship up and it would have been seaworthy and it would have been functional as a battleship, but it would have lost a lot of its armor capability, which would have meant that perhaps it wouldn't have been the best surface combatant against another battleship. By the 80s and early 90s, when these ships were last in commission, we weren't going up against any other battleships, so perhaps it would have been a moot point. But it's, I guess in a roundabout way, it's one of the reasons why these ships ultimately did not remain in service beyond the early 90s. But be that as it may, those were the hits that we took. We survived them. USS Wisconsin lives to fight another day, the last battleship in the world. And uh, it is would be able, in theory, to take out one of its sisters which would be a terrible situation, but it happened here, and we are a little bit the worse for wear for it, but all in all, we survived.